Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Future Fest Extended. Today we're going to be having a conversation with Hamza, who is the CEO of Tibi. He's going to be telling you more about himself and his company. So let's start off before any more wait. Hello Hamza and welcome to Future Fest Extended. Hello Fatma and thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much for your time. Hamza, tell our audience a bit about yourself, how you started, where have you been before Tibi? Where did you study everything about yourself? Oh, okay. So uh, Fatma, I'm a third generation doctor and uh, I started interacting with patients at a very young age. Uh, my father owned a pharmacy and he used to fill in whenever the regular staff was away. Uh, but the first time I really got to experience what a patient goes through uh, was my, when my grandparents fell ill. I shifted to a hospital for six months taking care of them. And that was the first time uh, when I realized uh, the consequences of an illness, what a patient really deals through, the decision that they have to make, uh, the things that they have to follow through for their treatment, uh, things as small as getting a blood test done or a doctor's appointment, felt nothing short of a miracle, uh, getting those arranged in due time. So moving, the, uh, moving forward from there, uh, at 18, I established my first diagnostic collection center where I was taking samples from multiple labs. Uh, and from there onwards, I went to the med school and I was working within the healthcare community from diagnostic clinics uh, to dental clinics. I was looking how these service providers work and how they're able to uh, transfer that service onto the patients. And with so much, uh, you know, conversations with the patients and dealing with them, uh, I really got a fair idea of the pain points that they were facing. Uh, and that exactly led us uh, to the incorporation towards the pain. That's amazing. I mean, you started at 19, I guess you said, and that's pretty early and the kind of exposure that you got. Uh, I think that is the kind of exposure that one needs to come up with something such an amazing uh, idea as Tibi. So tell us a bit more about Tibi. What do you guys do? How does it work? The business model and who are you helping? All right. So uh, the idea of Tibi uh, came right in COVID. So uh, when COVID started, uh, we got a permission uh, from the government and we were helping labs who had the capacity to perform PCR tests, collect samples from doorsteps. They lacked the framework for collection. And that's when the idea formed when we can have all the service providers on the same page to provide an easy access to the patients. And another realization that came through COVID was that a patient's journey is completed at many touch points starting from the point where they got awareness of a disease to the point where they had the accessibility of a doctor and a prescription was issued. Till this point, you have a fair idea of what your treatment looks like, but the resolution of your disease lies in the implementation of that treatment plan. And that involved getting the pharmacy as stakeholders in the business and the diagnostic labs. And that is exactly uh, what we did. Uh, so right at the end uh, of COVID, uh, we sent out this need that everyone has to be on the same page and a holistic uh, approach towards the patient problems where they are provided with informative uh, information. They, they have access to doctors through telemedicine and they get their pharmacy and lab orders at their doorstep. So this convenience was what was required. And as I explained through my journey, this is, this is what we've learned throughout that patients who were associated with us wanted that level of care. And one another thing that we have to keep in, uh, in particularly in context while dealing with patients here, our customers are usually in pain and they're not happy what's going with them. They, they already have the suffering of a disease with them. So we needed to complement them and provide them a stellar service uh, where there was someone who was looking after their health. Health is a fundamental right that everyone should have. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have those sort of facilities here. And Tibi was formed just to fill that gap. We want to be the people who are holding your hand through your disease. We, we want to help you save time. We want to help you save money and provide you ease in your pain. That's just phenomenal. And by everything that you just told me, I see that Tibi seems to be a very customer centric company. And I think that is precisely what you need if you're working in healthcare or health tech. So tell me a bit more about health tech. And uh, as you guys are a startup, how are you guys different 
from other startups in the industry that are working on a similar um, a niche, if there are any. Uh, tell me more about the industry and how competitive it is. All right, uh, but spot on, Fatma, on your first point, uh, the customer-centric approach. I think that is uh, that is something that, have, that has helped the B grow. So we as entrepreneurs were able to build the foundations of what a health tech set setup should look like. But it was the customer's response which evolved the service into what people really require. And that is the reason, that is the exact reason that we have a lot of retentive customers and recurring customers. Uh, because we have a clear vision and a clear air to what the patients have to say. We are here to solve your problems. The, uh, referring to your second question, how does the uh, health care market look like? So Pakistan has a massive healthcare uh, ecosystem. And uh, the, uh, the interesting part of this is that 80% of all the services today are being fulfilled by the private sector. So the private sector has to play a very important role. And this is not just the case with Pakistan. With all developing countries, we share this uh, statistics, right? And uh, talking about the competitors in the health business, uh, so I personally hold a lot of respect and gratitude for these people. Uh, we're the youngest amongst the people working in the health tech ecosystem, but people who've been working here for the past 10 years are responsible for bringing that adaption that today we're able to cultivate. If we are able today to think big and think of a solution that we would first form for Pakistan and take it to the region is because of the adaptability that these competitors have built over time. So hats off to them. Uh, how TB is different? Uh, I think the fundamental uh, fundamentals of any healthcare business need to have an awareness content. Uh, they have to have accessibility to doctors in terms of telemedicine. They need to have a, a pharmacy solution and they need to have a diagnostic solutions. So we are the only one who have uh, this holistic care. And on, on these foundations, we are building our company here forward. All of our competitors uh, are working in one of these aspects and providing great services to the customers. Perfect. That answer was everything I was looking for, which leads me to my next question. Uh, you um, said a bit about having everyone on board, when uh, even if it's pharmacies or um, labs, etc. So as I've uh, become recently a customer of Tibi, I can vouch for it that you guys are very timely. You guys are very thorough when it comes to assessment and you guys um, are very, I guess, accommodating when it comes to customers. Um, so I would just like to build more on that and get to know what it takes for a startup to be successful, uh, specifically talking about healthcare startups. Um, what does it take to be Tibi? So uh, I think the simplest, most answer, which you gave, uh, applies 100% here, listening to the customers. Uh, that is what we've done. Since the very beginning, we've kept a close contact with all the patients who've interacted with us, and we've built solutions for them. So they bring up the problems for which we bring, give the solutions to. Uh, I think uh, one thing that you know uh, has really helped Dibi, it was never about what Dibi has to offer. It's what people needed, and we brought the solutions for them. Another thing that uh, Fatma you need to understand is that Pakistan never lacked in the uh, infrastructure aspect of the private healthcare system. We saw a great example of how the private sector can come in and solve a problem through COVID. The, the way the private sector acted in uh, the diagnostic part of COVID and then the treatment was just phenomenal, right? Um, and, and unseen in any of the countries uh, near us. So we had the infrastructure, we needed to complement it with the patient experience. Uh, and that is exactly where Tibi fits in. Uh, I think uh, my advice or my learning, uh, uh, if I were to put it correctly, uh, is hearing to what your patients need, provide them a timely service. In Pakistan, we have this concept of uh, caregivers. Usually we are responsible for the health of our elders. We just needed to reciprocate what we did for our elders. And that's what we do. We treat every client as if they are our relatives and they are our elders and we take care and we accommodate them in the same manner. Yeah, I can vouch for that as I've been through it recently. Uh, I have an additional question that, uh, that would be amazing if you can answer it. What, what do you see um, in the future for the health tech industry? And what do you see in the future for Tibi specifically? Uh, what are your goals? Uh, right now, you guys are operating uh, in Punjab region, I suppose. 
So what do you guys plan on doing in the next five years? All right. So uh, Fatma, currently we're providing the express service just in the Punjab region, but we have the accessibility uh, of providing these services uh, throughout Pakistan. Uh, and how do you, how do I see the healthcare industry in the next five years? I think a lot of change is going to come into it, and a lot of uh, data recording and analysis is going to be done. So we've moved uh, forward from the stage where we thought that prevention, uh, you know, is the cardinal thing that we need to focus on. We, as an industry, as a sector, need to move on towards the predictive phase, where we start anticipating what the patient is going to go through and realize the most common fact that whenever someone needs healthcare needs, they are A, in pain, they're short of time, and we don't want them to make a lot of decisions. We want to have, we want them to have a clear pathway to follow, and we would help them follow that pathway. So where I see the uh, the B going forward and the healthcare sector going forward is that all the services going through one-stop solution where the patients have the access and the ability to uh, take on any service they need and any way they need it. We have the infrastructure for that. We just need to co couple it up with the experience and give the patients that access. So in five years, I believe that healthcare would be easily accessible in the hands of every Pakistani. And it would be interlinked and backed by people who are recording that data and analyzing it in a way that's predicting their health futures. We want to tackle a disease before it becomes an expensive solution. And the B today is stationed perfectly well to do that, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. And uh, I see no doubt in the future that you've just predicted here. Um, another very impromptu question, but I think it's very important and I don't want to miss out on that. I was researching a bit about the B and I saw that you guys are collaborating with different institutions like LAMS, etc. And you're uh, arranging sessions regarding different topics in the health tech. But one thing that really stood out to me was the mental health uh, sessions that you guys arranged. So tell me a bit more about that and how important do you think that is? Also, do you think it's being catered enough by the private sector? Uh, what work do you think is still yet to be done? Uh, true. Uh, so, 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 let me take uh, take it forward. Then, why did uh, Tibi venture into the mental health in the first place? So, while we believe we need to do a lot of things in the corporate world and provide an excellent service, we also have this strong belief that we want to build a company that lives longer than us. And no company can be built in such a way without having a soul. So, the soul is primarily made through the social responsibility aspect. We believe that the people who are studying in university universities are the future of Pakistan and we want to take care of them today. We want to address their queries today and that is why we went to all the universities and where we found a gap in the mental uh, health services being provided there, we got hold of all the mental health service providers, made them sit across a table with the universities and come up with comprehensive solutions. Uh, the mental health aspect lacked in the service delivery as well as the awareness and the taboo aspect. Today, we're working day and night with them to, uh, you know, take these taboos out of the market and uh, make it acceptable for everyone. Needing mental health is as good as needing, uh, you know, advice for an infection or a viral infection or a bacterial infection. We need to treat it that way. And what we've learned from our experience, that simple coping mechanisms can help you go so far and they can increase your productivity. So that's primarily what the B is working uh, on. And uh, we're requesting all the healthcare providers, everyone who wants to take an initiative uh, in terms of health uh, awareness, uh, mental health awareness, uh, join uh, with us, let's join hands and take it further. The solution is going to come through us uh, through our community of doctors. And another thing that uh, I want to highlight there, the doctors that are working, one of the greatest motivations Tibi has today are the doctors. They have so much to give. They are, for me, you know, the, uh, they, they are our heroes. The way they performed in COVID uh, and after uh, giving these services to COVID patients, how they went back to their families, managed their daily routines, it's just phenomenal. Uh, the sort of, I, I really feel uh, the sort of appreciation that doctors need to get within their community is not there. Uh, but even with those uh, realities, 
these doctors are there to work for the community and we provide them the platform and the accessibility to the audience and together uh, be it mental health or physical health they be these doctors will provide inshallah an excellent solution for all the patients that is amazing and very well explained talking of doctors i would like to lead on to the next question from where uh, from there uh, what advice would you give to uh, the doctors in the industry or young doctors who are in the process of completing their studies uh, as well as the young entrepreneurs who are planning to work in the health tech uh, all right uh, so fatma i think uh, i still have to achieve some milestones till i start giving advice but i can do pass on the advice that i got so for entrepreneurs i think the best advice uh, which i got was that you know wealth is not what you have uh, it is what you can give and and build a company that lives longer than you uh, so i i go to uh, big entrepreneurs uh, for advice and i take them actively these are the people who have had a customer centric approach and have built big businesses on them so i i go to them very often in terms of young doctors uh, together we are going to change how healthcare is perceived and delivered in pakistan so i as a uh, as a young doctor myself we have great ambitions but we don't have the platform uh, that gives us the ability to take what our vision or our dream to the patients uh, and we have to wait uh, a specific number of years to gain that credibility and have our voice or voice were heard so today tibbi provides an opportunity to all the young doctors this initiative was started by young doctors we take, want to take it to the end with the help of these young doctors you are you guys are going to be you know the catalyst that brings a paradigm shift in our healthcare is perceived so yes uh, let's work together and let's bring a change and let's bring a change a positive change into the community and improve the health standards uh, like anywhere else in the world we do not need to rely on anyone else together we can bring the difference thank you so much hamza that's all i had to ask you today i think we have covered everything that we needed to know and we needed to tell our audience thank you so much for your time and thank you for answering our questions thank you for it was an absolute pleasure